Ooh, I have just projected from my real self onto the screen. This ability is part of the game Second Sight. It's a stealth action psychological thriller that'll have you second guessing yourself at every turn. It's also developed by Free Radical, the same team who made Time Splitters. And if you know my channel, you know that I love using their sounds. <laughs> this might be my favorite story I've done on the channel so far, so let's just hop right into it. Imagine waking up on a gurney with no memory of anything, with guards in your face saying, Ew, what happened to this guy? I heard he's a psycho killer who ain't ever getting out of here. Sweet, what'd he do? That's classified. Apparently I'm so dangerous, only a heavy dose of drug can stop me. Who am I and why am I such an important test subject? This might have something to do with it, because it appears I'm a psychic type, with many powers including telekinesis, how did I end up being able to do this? And even self-healing. Those are only two powers. I said many, but they should come in handy as I make my escape. And let me tell you, I was giving out handies left and right. I think I killed him. Now to leave this place, I just need to find the elevator password. So I can take the elevator, of course. I want some answers! So after relentlessly bullying the surgeons for the elevator password, I got the elevator password. Inside the elevator, I notice my name is John Vatic. What happened? It's all coming back to me now. It all began six months ago in a U.S. Marine base in Germany, where I, Doctor John Vatic, Doctor John Vatic, meet with Colonel Joshua Stark. Colonel Joshua Stark, U.S. Marines, A.K.A. Sergeant Cortez, alternate costume. Damn it! Damn it! So uh, what's all this about? He doesn't explain why I was summoned here. He just tells me I'm part of the squad and that I should get the training. You got me! That concludes your training, Doctor. And after finishing Tutorial Island, we begin the mission briefing. What this game is really about. We've managed to verify his identity as Victor Grianko. A psychic professor named Victor Grianko is running morbid experiments somewhere in Siberia. And we're concerned that his 50 years of psychic research could be a huge threat in the wrong hands. So it's up to us to stop it. But why do they need me? Our advisor tells us we may need your expertise on the ground. Well, you see, the team's mystical advisor, Jane Wilde, made it clear that I'm the only one who can save us. She's a mystic. She's a fake. But of course, I don't subscribe to that nonsense. I'm a doctor. How do you know Grianko is a fraud? Why? Well, but hey, maybe she knows something I don't. We then cut back to consciousness at the medical facility. Winter eyes. Now, with a little more knowledge on who I am, I decide to search for my patient records to learn more. But it won't be easy. The cops have arrived in bunches, so I'll just have to bring out the oats and honey. Stop right there, cops! And just when I thought I hit a dead end, I developed invisibility, a very useful tool in my tool belt. But time was ticking, and I had to quit monkeying around, which was a difficult task in this room full of gorillas. But I evolved into a human and found the patient records. Here I learned more about the winter ice mission I was a part of in Siberia, and it appears the mystical Jane Wilde was killed in action. What the? What kind of action was this? No one else can say what? us. John, Vatic. I think we're going to find out. Flashing back to Siberia, and I'm still like, this is stupid, why am I even here? Then Jane says, You're the only one who can protect us! I still don't believe her, but that's not important right now. We're under attack. So I entered the field like a John Deere tractor, grinding enemies into grain for my livestock. Our spy plane's in the air. <laughs> the chickens have come home to roost, I say, as Jane runs off into a small building. Are you crazy? I saw something, John. Apparently she saw something run into here. But look out, this, this place, place is gonna, gonna blow. blow. How do you know? No! Was this the action she was killed in? Or did my premonition of danger save her life? Who cares? We have worse things to deal with. Hey! By investigating the building, we learn that these enemies aren't fighting for Grianko. They're hunting him. We're not the only ones looking for him. And if he's not here, then where the hell is he? Well, this recent report states that he was escorted back to the village of Dobrensk, the exact location of his research. Grenko's research is at a village called Dobrensk. It's just north of here. This is great news. So Jane and I rendezvous with the Winter Ice team and plan our next move to Dobrensk. All right, let's move out. You saved my life, John. Thank you. 
That's when I snapped back to the hospital, noticing that Jane's report changed from killed in action to incarcerated. In an insane asylum, my mind's playing tricks on me, and the thought of her locked away like that really breaks my heart. That's why I'm gonna break her out. But first, I need to break out. <laughs> now that I'm at ground level, I'll have to take a more sneaky approach. It's a good thing I learned a new projection ability. Reminds me of my ex-girlfriend. You'll see me using this power a lot. I found it to be the most fun and effective. Hold it right there, you freak! I also found it fun to get real tricky on the enemy. Oh look, a perfectly placed escape vehicle. Let's enter it. Upon my departure from the hospital, the guards call up the mysterious Big Boss Man. Go ahead. He appears to be uneasy at the thought of me roaming free in the wild. You know what he's capable of. Hopefully he doesn't make the educated guess that I'm going straight for Jane at the asylum. Arriving at the asylum, I jump over this convenient little wall with no barbed wire on it and get to creeping. Looking back at this, I realize I neglected the invisibility for most of the time. It really chokes me up to think about. Speaking of getting choked up... Hey! My upgraded telekinesis made me feel like Darth Vader from the critically acclaimed series Lego Star Wars. Now moving forward and finding the library computer, I was able to pinpoint Jane's exact location. She's just beyond the padded cells crazy area, where I got to release many zombie-like patients into the wild. Yeah! I also released my shotgun into the wild. So after reducing my enemies to wet piles of blood and bile, I moseyed on into Jane Wilde's room and shot that bitch. Just kidding. Jane. I tried talking to her, but she's lost her mind. Her sanity was like a tube of chapstick you dropped on the floor. Now in theory, that would make it impossible for me to break her out if she couldn't really comprehend anything. But remember, I'm magical, so I can charm her to follow me. Come on! Okay. And together as a not very good team, we journeyed across the rickety rooftops. <laughs> right through the harrowing hallways, and all the way down to the sacred sewers. Now that we're somewhat safe, I ask Jane, I ask her, how do we get like this? What the fuck was going on? I can't remember. What about the Colonel? The Colonel's dead. They shot him. You were there. They popped the Colonel? It's all coming back to me right now. We flash back to the Winter Ice mission, where it was just me and the Colonel running duos. Our mission was to simply search the area for Grienko. You think Grienko's here? But after coming up empty, a hologram child appears to take control of Stark. You can save us. The hell was that? Although not sure what I just witnessed, we should follow in that direction. The path leads to a broken down rail tunnel, where in one of the connecting rooms, we get ambushed. What? This must be where the colonel dies. That's when the mysterious child appears to prove this is all real. You are like us. You have the powers. There's another one up there! By activating my powers, I'm now fully equipped to save the colonel, possessing unsuspecting enemies and fully engaging in friendly fire. Good news. The colonel is still alive and well. Good work. But the bad news, we discover that we're fighting against U.S. Special Forces. It's not Russian. It's U.S. Special Forces. You mean... Yeah. Our side. The plot is thickening like a microwaved bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> now back to the storm drain. And it appears the mysterious Big Boss Man has his men flooding into our area. Take them from both sides. Shoot to kill. Unfortunately for them, it is I that will cause mass hysteria. <laughs> With all my enemies fused with underground liquids, Jane and I re-emerged to the streets, and she says something I never would have expected. We need to find the Colonel. Find the Colonel? Just moments ago, she said, The Colonel's dead. Apparently after the mission went sour, they tried to court-martial him. They covered up everything. But he disappeared before they could arrest him. And conveniently enough, he gave Jane the address to his hideout. 
The address led us to the streets of Queens, New York, with men in suits already here hunting for the colonel, as if they've just dropped a bag of popcorn. I'll find him. Circle the block. So it looks like I'll have to get extra crafty with the environment. In running the block, I notice I might not be alone in this fight. Where's the colonel hiding out? There's a violent gang running the territory. Maybe they can help me find the colonel. I'm looking for a Colonel Stark. Really? You and everyone else. This is important. It turns out, they're protecting him. So to gain their trust, I help deliver a hot package to a fellow member. Here's your package. Thanks. And in return, I get a viper tattoo as gang initiation. Nice. He's got the viper mark. Now fully immersed in street life, the vipers kindly escort me to the colonel's hideout, when a gang war breaks out between us and the suits. And although they were dressed to impress, this party called for casual attire. <laughs> With the streets clear of the real bad guys, my new best buddies send me up to Colonel Stark's apartment. I can't find him, but he's got a nice pile of classified documents. Looks like the Colonel's been doing some paperwork. Don't shoot. John? He's surprised to see me alive. Thought I was killed with the rest of Winter Ice back in Dubrensk. That can't be true. I'm right here. It's best. It's killed them all. <sighs> we killed them all, John. <sighs> Let's just see what happened six months ago in the village of Dobrensk. That's where Grienko is supposedly running his experiments on innocent children. Keep your eyes peeled. Now at first, the place seems deserted. Until bullets start coming in hot, like a plate of microwave tortillas. And with our communications offline, we were gonna have to use flawless teamwork to stay alive. We were like a seasoned pirate crew, singing sea shanties amidst the dangerous storm. Hand in hand, we went on together, swabbing the deck, manning the cannons, and repairing the hull. Arr. If only the Russians didn't commit genocide. They wiped out everyone. Civilians too. This is genocide, sir. And although the whole team survived, Colonel Stark called for a retreat. But Jane says no. We're so close. This woman is the key. She knows where to find the children. She's one of the scientists. I don't like this, sir. Vedic, you okay? I lost you for a second. I then snapped back to reality, or whatever this is, because before my flashback, the colonel said, It's best, it's killed them all. And now he's saying, We were lucky to get out without taking casualties. Turns out we all ended up being used as scapegoats to cover up the Zenner Project, aka Granko's underground experiments on innocent children. Human guinea pigs. But it gets worse. Hansen started his own experiments here in the US. Who's Hansen? Who's Hansen? Only the director of tactical weapons research for the NSE, aka Big Mysterious Boss Guy. He was there, in your breath. But no time for discussion. We've been compromised. The building is surrounded, Vatican. And I have to get these top secret notes of the agency building ASAP. It's all there. I'll get you out of here. But I won't get free without a fight. I managed to get away unscathed, but unfortunately, Jane Wilde has been taken by the enemy. This is a tragedy, but no time to wallow. It's time to get into the agency building. Time to give that Hansen a piece of my mind. I'm here to see Director Hansen. And you are? John. John Vadic. Now, this level is very small if we're talking about total square feet, but it's big in creativity. So instead of the recommended invisible sneak and tranquilize approach, I chose to take possession of the agents to pretty much have them fire themselves. Hey. And I have to admit, I felt bad for killing this lady. She didn't deserve it. But once I cleaned out the area like a Swiffer wet jet, I logged into Hansen's user account and accessed the video file containing his ultimate plan. He's splicing together the DNA of Grienko's psychic children and using it to create human psychic superweapons that have already been deployed all over the world. Are my efforts too late? How do we fail in Dubrensk? Well, I guess we're going to find out. They kill us. They kill the children. We flash back right to where we left off, where at the village gate, one of Granko's dying scientists says, You must save them! But only I can go because I'm just like them, and they will kill anyone who isn't just like them. Me? I told you, John. Go to the church. The facility is underneath it. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Jane. <laughs> I'm going. Well, we got a long way to go, so time to get to work. Get over here!
So after navigating the inner village and choking enemies like a restaurant-grade mozzarella stick, I found the church, I went inside, and cranked my way into the underground facility of psychic treachery. They kill us! They kill the children! What the fuck is going on? My name is Lawrence Gordon, I'm a doctor. Now at this time, Hansen and Grianko were closing up shop here in Dubrensk. Hansen got word about my recent infiltration, so he tells Grianko, Gather up your most important notes for these officers. We're leaving. The same notes Colonel Stark will give me in his hideout six months from now. And before Hansen leaves, the two boogeymen have one last interaction. But my children! Don't worry, Professor. I'll look after them. So it looks like I have some children to save. And right off the bat, we head inside the lab and meet Anna. I am Anna. Kinda looks like the monkey character model. She tells me time is running out for the other children, so I must act expeditiously. There are still two more children left here. <laughs> Nadia, you must help her. Are you Nadia? Yes, that is exactly who I am. And after saving the five psychic children, we're finally able to meet Victor Grienko. Grienko? Ah, have you come to help me with my things? The crazy kook is raving about his research masterpiece, the greatest weapons the world has ever seen, and that he's using Hansen in the United States to fund him. You have money. <laughs> and Hansen will finish creating these weapons in the US. We will finish my work there. Americans and their money. It's the route to all evil, I tell you. With my flashback complete and more knowledge on how terrible this is, it's now time to find and confront Hansen. Now the whole building is after me, but we all know how that goes. After ragdolling just about everyone, I was able to reach the top floor and come face to face with the superhuman weapons. You cannot survive. They're just some white guys in their undies. And they're invincible. I can see how this can be a problem out in the public. Although they are susceptible to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. <laughs> and also, self-deletion. <laughs> He's killing everybody, Mr. Hansen. What do we do? I'll be waiting in my office. This leaves one last thing to do. Stop Hansen once and for all. Ah, Dr. Vatik. I know what you did in Dubrensk. And I know what's going on here. Research and development, Dr. Vatik. But he's already thought all of this through. The cover-up, the evidence that I was responsible for killing innocent villagers. You lost control. No. And how do you explain what you've done now? I... I just want to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop us now. We have samples all over the country. You can't change the past. You're wrong, Hanson. Hopefully one more flashback can fix this. Now that I know the full cycle of Hansen's plan, I tell Grankyo, I tell him, Listen, you crazy kook, Hansen is lying to you. They're killing the children. Oh, <gasps> don't lie to me. He thought the kids were just going on a fun field trip to the US. <laughs> I can't help but feel bad for the guy. Where is he? And as a last act of heroism, he tells me Hansen went down to the lower level, then says goodbye. Your services are no longer needed, Professor. Oh. So I kill off the guards and scurry down the steps to the elevator. Where I soon learn, this is where they keep the funky ones. Who are you? I'm Evan's neighbor, please, let me out. Wait, don't go. It's also where I get a vision into the future. First time being of the hospital where I started the game. John, it's me. So I find my future self in the operating room and receive some groundbreaking info. This is not the present. This is a possible future. A possible future? That can't be right. Moving forward and going down deeper into the facility, I get one last vision. Ah! I'm right back in the agency building, and Jane's voice reveals the final piece of the puzzle. John, this is your final power. Precognition. My perception of reality was entirely flipped. I was never getting flashbacks of the past. I was actively viewing projections of the future, which explains the important events constantly changing after each flashback. You can't change the past. I may not be able to change the past, Hansen, but I can change the future. You must stop Hansen. Who's that over there? Hansen! So, you even know my name? This ends here. However you want it, Dr. John Vatic, but you're coming back to America with me. Take him down! I don't know why he was so confident that his men could stop me here, when I pretty much just killed his entire army over the past hour. 
And he may be standing tall behind psychic-proof glass, but me and my magic little pals will shatter that illusion. This glass is bullet and psychic. No! I said stay away! Ah, but they start eating them. This is fantastic. And in the end, the Winter Ice mission was successful. The team survived, Jane probably likes me now, and the world is saved. The end. And that's the video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, why don't you drop a like down below? Maybe even a comment. Or better yet, check out one of these two videos I have right here. And very importantly, I want to give a huge loving shout out to my wonderful, beautiful patrons that are located just scrolling up here. Also, join the Discord server. Uh, thank you guys so much, and that's about it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one.